Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and I am the Math Lab Coordinator and work in MBSS 222 of the Math and Behavioral Social Science Building. It is my job to help students through their math courses here at Walter State. And as part of that job, I'm doing these podcasts to help students um, as they um, learn about certain topics as to supplement uh, to their teacher's lectures. These are not to replace the teacher lectures and are missing quite a bit of material that you'll need. So be sure that you're going to classes and getting that material. And after watching the, these podcasts, if you need some additional help, be sure that you come and see me in MBSS 222 for some additional help. Today's topic is how to write an equation from a table. And at this point, I am assuming that you've seen y equals mx plus b and understand that this is the uh, slope-intercept form equation uh, for a line and that you know m always represents our slope, that slope is rise over run. We use rise over run generally when we're talking about the uh, graphical or visual representation of a line. So in this case, we don't have a picture. We have numbers. So this is the numerical representation. So we need to think about this as the differences in the y's over the differences in the x's. And I shortcut that myself by using the Greek symbol delta, which is just a little triangle, and it just simply means the change in or the difference in y2 minus y1, which is we can abbreviate by saying the difference, and I abbreviate it further by using the delta symbol, delta y over delta x. Uh, math people like to use symbols instead of words. Um, I guess it's because we uh, uh, are, uh, think with the other side of our brain or something. Now, one of the things we do when we're given a table is we have to find the two pieces of information. And I said what M was, but I forgot to write down that our B is the y-intercept. Now, graphically, it's real easy to see the y-intercept. It's where um, it crosses the X axis, excuse me, the Y axis. It's the Y intercept, so it's where it crosses the Y axis. And it's very easy to spot that. And we'll take an example from a, a previous podcast. So you may recognize it if you've watched it. If not, it's, that's okay too. But it's an, a graph of an equation. And you can see that this one crosses the Y axis and it crosses at 3. Well, I want you to also notice that if I graph if I wrote that point here as an ordered pair, that ordered pair would be the point 0, 3. What that indicates is that I move left or right none and up 3 to get to that point. If I moved any in the x direction, if x was anything other than 0, then I would not have a y-intercept. The y value can be any number because it'll still cross the y-axis. But to be a y-intercept, that x value has to be zero. If x is a half, I'm not going to be on that y-axis. If x is negative three, I'm not going to be on that y-axis. If x is two, I'm not going to be on that y-axis. x must be zero to be on that y-axis, and then I can go up to three, and it's the y-intercept. So, that's one important thing that we need to remember about the y-intercept is x must equal 0. So, the first thing we want to do when we look at a table, we can do it in either order. We can find the y-intercept last, but I want to find the y-intercept first because it's just easy to look at the table, look down the x values, and see if I can spot a 0. There's the zero. So since x equals zero, this value here is my y-intercept. Now, 
And since it's 0, b is equal to 0. Not because the x is 0, but because the y is 0. The y value is your... Uh, the y value is your y-intercept. How far up or down you go is your y-intercept. And in this case, it's 0, 0. The next thing we want to find, now that i found that, that leaves a slope to find. And again, slope is about subtracting the y's and comparing them to the subtraction of the x's. So to do that, I'm just going to subtract. And I'm going to follow the same procedure that I used when I talked about slope from a table in a previous podcast. Two minus one is one. One minus zero is one. Zero minus a negative one is one and negative 1 minus negative 2 is 1. Now you didn't see where I typed them in because my screen's not wide enough, but I did type those in as well. But you just want to do the subtraction. You don't want to make a big production of it, you just want to subtract. Okay, now I'm going to go to the other side of the table and do the subtraction. Now, we can either subtract up the table or down the table because our x's are generally listed in numerical order. If I subtract up the table, then I'm ensured that my x's are positive. Um, there are other reasons why we subtract up the table that have to do with some other math that you may get to later, and that was the way we were taught, so that's the way we tend to do it as math teachers. Um, if your teacher always subtracts down, then you want to subtract down. It will not change your final answers. It will just change your procedures. But you want to stick to doing it one way. And if you subtract up on one side of the table, you have to subtract up on the other. And again, I covered this when we talked about finding slope from a table. And I'm just repeating that same process in this problem. So I'm going to go negative 2 minus negative 1. And because of the signs, we want to be sure we're not missing these problems because of signs. So use your calculator if in doubt. Also a great place, and I didn't say these out loud, but I typed them in, and you can go back and watch me type them in and double check. But it's also a great place to review your signs and make sure to kind of do them in your head, check them on the calculator, and then write them down. But let's be sure that you do not miss this problem because of signs. Now, I didn't write the directions down for this particular problem, so let me give you verbally... Uh, the directions, which is determine if it's a linear equation, and if so, write the equation. Well, to be a linear equation, it has to have the same slope for every pair of numbers. And since every pair of numbers seem to be the same here to here, here to here, that looks to me, and it is, to be a slope. And again, we want to do the change in y over the changes in x's. And again, I'm just using the shortcut symbol to show that it's the, the subtraction, which I did here, negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 1 over 1. And I could do that again for any pair of numbers. Now, I don't want to enter mixed pairs, but for any pair of numbers, I get that same value, which is negative 1. I also have my y-intercept, so I have my two values, b equals 0 and m equals negative 1, so there's my equation, y equals negative 1x plus 0. And your teacher will count it correct this way, but if she gives you or he gives you the answer, they'll just as likely write it this way because the 1 is understood, we do need a negative in front of it, and we don't need to write the 0 at the end because plus 0 doesn't change the value x plus 0 is still x, or negative x in this case, plus 0 would still be negative x. Okay, now, that is then the
the equation for this table, and it is linear. Okay? Let's look at the second table. Again, I'm going to try to spot the y-intercept first by going down the x's. There's my 0. So this is going to be my b, and I'm going to slide it in right there. You won't always have room to slide it in there, so you may also want to come down and just write it down here that my b or my y-intercept is negative 1. It will cross the y-axis at negative 1. Again, I want to do my subtractions on my x's and my y's. And see how I just use the little arrows or the little, uh, er well, arrows for lack of a better word, uh, to indicate where I'm subtracting. 6 minus 4 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 0 minus negative 2 is 2. And I'm doing these slopes very quickly. If you need to slow it down, pause, do the subtraction yourself, and then bring it back um, on line to play. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is 0. And negative 1 minus 2 is 1. Is that right? Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Okay, now let's look at our slope. Our slope again is how the y's compare, how the change in the y's compare to how the change in the x's compare. Okay, I'm sliding out of the graph, out of the viewing screen, so let me bring it back up. And if I look at this, notice that I'm going to compare points, or groups of points. So I'm going to compare that 1 is to 2. Well, I could say the slope is 1 half. But look at the next pair. If I go up a pair, then I get that 2 is to 2. Well, 1 half doesn't equal 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And the next one then is 0 over 2. These are not equal. When you get sets of slopes that are not equals, it is not a linear equation. So this one is not a linear equation, and therefore we do not need to write an equation for it. Let's look at our next example. And our next example, let's look at it, and again, we're going to do our subtraction here of the points we're given. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0 minus negative 1, I'm actually typing this in and not showing you, is 1. Negative 1 minus negative 2 is 1. And again, I'm just following that same pattern. Notice we've got a lot of missing information in this table. Okay. We can also subtract. Now, it's real tempting on this one to subtract going down, but we don't want to do that. And I'm actually going to draw arrows in even where I don't have numbers. Well, I can't do negative 10 minus something I don't know. I can't do something I don't know minus something I don't know, something I don't know minus negative 1. I can do negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3, and 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. Now, the two pairs of numbers that I have I'm going to slope right here so you can see it. I 
I subtracted my y's and got negative 3, and I subtracted my x's and got 1, and I end up with negative 3 over 1 or negative 3. So my slope is negative 3, and in this case I forgot to look for my y-intercept first, so I'll do it now. Where's my x equal to 0? Here. So that means my b is equal to negative 1. So I can write my equation, y equals negative 3x plus a negative 1, and of course we don't like the double signs there, so we'll just use that sign right there, negative 3x minus 1. Now, this table is missing some values, and there are a couple of ways that we can fill it in. Notice that this one counts up by one more. 0, 1, and it follows the pattern, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So since it follows the pattern of one more, notice what the pattern is over here, 5, 2, negative 1. Well, this is counting down by 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So the next value should be negative 1 minus 3. It follows that pattern. When you're missing values here, don't try to make it harder than it is. Look for patterns. One of the most wonderful things is to talk about a kindergartner and his math because they're just full of wonder because they're looking for patterns. And I think we lose that wonder of how much math is about patterns. That's all we're looking for here. And we know that that value then is negative 4. Well, I'm going to keep up with that pattern and see how many times I have to do that to get to negative 10. If I subtract 3 again, negative 4 minus 3, I get negative 7. So the next number down would be negative 7, and that would mean the next number down here would be 2. And then negative 7 minus 3 would be negative 10. Ah, that's my next number. And so the next number down here would be 3. And I have finished filling in that table, and I didn't do anything but follow the patterns. Okay? I know a couple of our teachers use this, and the students look at this as the hardest thing they've done. And I try to tell them that it's just patterns. You just have to follow the patterns. Okay, now we've written the equation for the line and we can do that without following and filling in these missing pieces of information. So we can also use this wonderful thing called our calculator to help us find this answer as well. And we can also use this calculator to check our answers to see if we've got the right information. Now, I'm going to type in the wrong answer first. I'm going to type in negative 3, or I'm going to type in positive 3. Let's say I got in a hurry and I wrote positive 3x for my slope, uh, minus 1. And if I do that, what I want to do next is to create the table that I have in front of me. And your calculator will do that if you press the second key, and I'm going to go through that again because I think I went through it too fast. We want to press the y equals, clear out anything that's there. And by the way, if on your calculator you see one of these up here highlighted, you want to move your arrow up until it's on top of it, hit enter, and then come off of it so it's not highlighted. Okay? And I'm going to type it in. And again, I'm typing in the wrong answer. The right answer is negative 3x minus 1. I'm going to type in positive 3x minus 1. And then I'm going to press second. And then I'm coming over here to the word table. And this is creating a table for me. And notice in the x values that they match up here. The x values negative 2, negative 1, 0, so forth. Well, negative 2 does not give me a positive 5. So I know what I've typed in my y equals is not the equation for this line. 
So I'm going to come back to Y. I'm going to clear this one out. And I'm going to type in the answer we actually got, which was negative 3X minus 1. Again, that's what we got down here. I'm just typing it in. I'm going to hit second table again. Negative 2 is 5. Negative 1 is 2. 0 is negative 1. 1 is negative 4. Now, it just left it blank. It didn't actually ask us to fill out that one. It actually wanted us just to fill out for negative 10 is 3. <coughs> Excuse me. And sometimes your teachers want to leave that blank, and that'll be just right up there. But you can always copy out the table, and for your blanks, you can always leave as many blanks as you need or fill in as much as you need until you get to the number that your teacher wants. And in this case, we have the table and it matches, so we know our answer is correct and we have the right missing points. I hope this helps you find equations from tables. Uh, be sure to watch the other podcast and uh, as well. And if you need additional help, come and see us in room 222 of the Math and Behavioral Science Building. Thank you.